death battle, our combatants are always extraordinary in one way or another, whether they're a superhero or a plumber. But these two are literally built to show up the rest of their kind. Mewtwo, the genetically engineered Pokemon. And Shadow the Hedgehog, the ultimate life form. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Years ago, a brilliant scientist named Dr. Fuji was working to create a brand new life form which would change the world. That's great and all, but he had something else in mind. Fuji hoped his experiments would help him discover a way to resurrect the person he cherished most, his deceased daughter, Amber. With unlimited resources funded by mob money, he figured out how to clone his daughter's ball of consciousness. Because science! But before he could finish, he had to create the most powerful Pokemon, a clone of the legendary Mew. And he named him Mewtwo. Yeah, Fuji wasn't very creative when it comes to naming, but when you can create a new life form with nothing but a fossilized eyelash, you know you're a master of genetic engineering. A field I'd love to get more experience in myself. Told you a thousand times, Wiz! You're not gonna alter my DNA! Uh, <laughs> what, what, what are you talking about? I, I would never do that. Always watching, Wiz. Always. Growing up in a test tube, Mewtwo's only companions were Fuji's other test subjects, including Amber herself, through some sort of psychic link. Amber taught Mewtwo about the sun, the moon, tears, and, you know, life stuff. Oh, and also death when she died for good right in front of him. Worrying this may be too mentally traumatic for the still infant Mewtwo, Dr. Fuji's team erased all memory of her. Unfortunately, this left Mewtwo with a feeling of loss and confusion, and no memories to explain why. With nothing else to do, Mewtwo decided to take out all his aggression on all of humanity. And then he turned some stupid kid into stone, a bunch of Pokemon cried, and Mewtwo figured out humans aren't so bad after all. Mewtwo is one of the most powerful Psychic-type Pokemon, defeating its foes with the power of its mind. Hey, wait a minute, you keep calling him It. Is Mewtwo a guy or a girl? Well, neither. Technically, it's genderless. Oh, how does it bang? It doesn't. Bummer. Well, one thing's for sure, it's got balls uh. of ghost energy that blow holes in stadiums, had an onslaught of undodgeable stars, multiple types of defensive shields, and a healing ability for when those shields don't quite cut it. Alongside its other abilities, Mewtwo's favorite move is Psychic, a powerful form of telekinesis. With it, Mewtwo can effortlessly send enemies as heavy as a 500-pound onyx flying through the air. He can even make himself fly like a Zubat out of hell. Also, it can augment its melee combat with psychic energy or occasionally a massive spoon. Would you say he sometimes spoons his enemies? No, nothing about Mewtwo is cuddly, especially when it uses Hyper Beam or Psy Strike, attacks so strong they can incapacitate the toughest of Pokemon in a single hit. And when trouble comes a-knockin', Mewtwo answers the door with a badass Mega Evolution. Mewtwo is one of the few Pokémon capable of Mega Evolving without the assistance of a trainer. As Mega Mewtwo Y, it gains enormous boosts in strength, defense, and speed. Making Mewtwo powerful enough to fly into space while carrying a robot bug monster. Fast enough to breach escape velocity over 25,000 miles per hour, over 32 times the speed of sound. So, really, really fast. Mewtwo is so skilled in its psychic prowess, it can wipe specific memories from dozens of people at once. On top of all that, it can survive a massive amount of abuse. Like the time it got double impaled by an alien Pokemon's tentacles. Didn't they censor that? It effortlessly defeated most of the Pokemon Champion's team, including a legendary Articuno. It also teleported an entire crater lake from the top of Mount Kena. This lake is comparable to a similar body of water in the real world, Lake Kilatoa, which holds over 385 million tons of water. Wow! That's almost enough power to lift my ex-wife on buffet day! Being a psychic Pokémon, Mewtwo is naturally weak to bug, ghost, and dark-type damage. Strange Dr. Fuji didn't pull that code out of his DNA, but whatever. Hey, you gotta have some sort of failsafe when you're making the world's most powerful Pokémon. Ah uh, yes, the ultimate failsafe against the most powerful psychic Pokémon. Bugs! Oh god, it's a Caterpie! Get it away, it's spooky! I was not born a Pokémon, I was created. And my creators have used and betrayed me. So, I stand alone. Ah! 
Years ago, a brilliant scientist named Professor Gerald Robotnik, the grandfather of Sonic's forever balding nemesis, worked to create a new life form which would change the world. It was called Project Shadow, a covert government operation to discover the secret to immortality. Besides, you know, like diet and exercise, cause fuck that. In Professor Gerald's case, specifically for his granddaughter Maria, who was dying as a result of neuroimmune deficiency syndrome. Now that I think about it, Project Shadow is a pretty scary name for a program that's all about curing diseases and saving humanity. Maybe it has something to do with the program's secret pact with a hive mind alien race called the Black Arms. Perhaps. Okay. So what do you get when you take immortality, the cure of all diseases, aliens, and put them all together to make the ultimate life form? You get... A Hedgehog. Shadow the Hedgehog was the first step toward a perfect future. And during his time in Gerald's space laboratory, Shadow and Maria grew very close. Until they were separated by a bullet. Turns out the governments of the world weren't too fond of all the evil alien business, so they stormed the place, captured Shadow, and killed Maria right in front of him. Fifty years later, Shadow escaped and decided to take his revenge by just killing everyone. Until he remembered Maria's last words were pretty much, don't be a dick, so he changed his mind. Now on the side of good, Shadow dedicated himself to protecting the world from the forces of evil. Turns out fighting the bad guys isn't too hard when you've got super strength, super speed, helped along by some awesome rocket shoes, and a bucket of deadly chaos powers. By channeling the potentially unlimited power of the Chaos Emeralds, Shadow can enhance physical attacks, heal over time, and strike with powerful energy blasts. And with the power of Chaos Control, he can warp through space and distort time, slowing it down to a crawl, or with enough power, freezing it completely. He's got so much power, he can only contain it all with two inhibitor rings around his wrists. Unless he gets all seven Chaos Emeralds, which he can use to transform into a Super Saiyan Shadow. Super Shadow, yeah. As Super Shadow, he is completely invulnerable, can move at the speed of light, and has unlimited access to the power of the Chaos Emeralds. Enough power to stop the Space Colony Arc's collision with Earth, and to teleport a giant comet the size of a city. Assuming this rock is half hollow and using the density of concrete as minimum base, this black comet must weigh at least 915 million tons. Even without his super form, Shadow is powerful enough to wipe out an entire alien fleet in one blast, fast enough to reach hypersonic speeds, and strong enough to play tug-of-war with a giant space monster who is so big he uses a planet a tenth the size of our moon as a chair. Naturally, when you've got this much power, you're probably a cocky dick. Yes, Shadow is excessively overconfident in his abilities. Also, he has a terrible memory. This guy has spent most of his life wondering who the hell he is. And even when he does remember, he usually winds up losing his memories later anyway. To be fair, if I fell from outer space and all I lost were my memories, I'd consider it a really good day. I mean, I lose them from just falling over at the bar. That's probably not because of the fall. Also, we can't forget that the Super Shadow form only lasts so long. Then again, when you move at light speed and have control over space and time, who cares about time limits? Not usually a problem for the ultimate life form. Many years ago, Professor Gerald Robotnik endowed me with the power of chaos control. A normal creature like yourself doesn't stand a chance against me. Alright, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle! You are not welcome here. Leave this place. What's your problem, freak? I know not its name, but it is black, red, and very annoying. Fight! This 
this will stop you! Another gem? What's he doing? Chaos! I must know. No! Control! <laughs> Good try, monster, but you're done! Too much! Chaos! Not this time. Control! Maria... Wait, where am I? Oh my god, I'm glowing! Why am I glowing? Sayonara. K.O. You know, Wiz, when we started Dead Battle, I don't think we ever expected to see someone die by a spoon. Yeah, Shadow may have had the advantage in pure speed and power, but this time, Brain defeated Brawn. Mewtwo got the rundown on all Shadow's abilities simply by reading his mind, giving it the knowledge it needed to counter or avoid crazy powers like Chaos Control. Ultimately, there was nothing really stopping Mewtwo from just taking over Shadow's mind, and its impressive durability and healing power bought it enough time to do so. It's pretty hard to win a fight when your opponent can make you forget what you're doing and who you are in an instant. Shadow has been mind control before, and has always relied on outside help to recover. Even while Super Shadow was physically invulnerable, this form didn't protect his mind. Like that time he fell from space, and then the worst game ever happened. Yeah, Shadow was gonna lose, spooner or later. The winner is Mewtwo. Next time on Death Battle! Hey. Yeah? You ever wonder who'd win in a fight between Carolina and the meta? <laughs> no. Only hopeless nerds on the internet care about that kind of crap. Uh, yeah. Why do you think I'm asking you? Hey guys, I'm Chad, I play Boomstick. I'm Ben, I play Wiz, and next time on Death Battle, we've got something very special planned, so stay tuned, we'll be announcing it shortly. Oh, I'm so excited. In the meantime, you guys can watch a show that Brian and I work on called Who Is? It's tons of information about characters that have had a bunch of history, but really quick and fun. And of course, Rooster Teeth and Screw Attack first members can always watch Death Battle and DBX along with a plethora of other stuff early, so be sure to click the link below and sign up if you haven't already. Plus, you get awesome stuff like 5% merch discounts, it's, it's great. You can actually get a 30-day free trial by clicking the link, so do it. See you guys soon.